the studio really liked an article written by Ken Lee, which was based primarily on the underground illegal, I guess you could say, racing scene here in New York, uh, specifically uptown Manhattan, if you're familiar with that area and or from where I'm from, Queens, right around from where I think it used to be where Shea Stadium used to be at, now known as City Field, home of the fucking loser ass Mets, but of course that's the point I'm making of the racing scene out there. He wrote an article, very well written. I got a chance to read it afterwards when I found out or, or discovered that little nugget, that little gem. The studio liked it so much that they basically bought the rights to the article and or got inspired so much by what he wrote that they said, okay, here's a certain amount of money. That's what we're giving you for basically taking this story and we're gonna obviously make a movie out of it. But they signed him to what initially seemed like a good ass deal. They signed him to something saying basically, okay, you're getting this much up front for what you wrote for the article, for inspiring us to create this fucking movie we have in mind now. But we're also gonna pay you for every year that we don't do something with this shit and or make a movie, you get another fucking undisclosed amount of money, another check basically. I think I read somewhere that it's about two or three years before they finally put out the movie, The Fast and the Furious, first one we'll talk about tonight. So he got paid initially up front for writing the article, basically them saying, thanks for inspiring us, now we're gonna make this movie based off your article. Two, three more years for not doing anything with the movie itself. Here's one year payment, two year payment, three year payment. Finally, they make the movie. Everything seems like it's going fine. But here's the scary part, and what sucked about it, as far as what I got from it, and that, what I read, of course. Finally comes time to make the movie. The movie happens, okay. The studio works it in the way, apparently, and this is what sucks because he's a writer of all things, a magazine writer. Now he's doing well for himself. So I'm assuming no complaints, besides his one big blemish as far as they made a whole fucking franchise based off of something I wrote. If it wasn't for me writing it, they would have never been inspired enough to do it this way or that way, even though they altered the story completely, taking it from New York originally, fucking transplanting it to LA with, with Vin Diesel, who didn't exist in my story, obviously, or fucking Michelle Rodriguez's horrible fucking acting, which thank God didn't exist in my article either. But basically, they make the movie happen. It becomes a whole franchise. 20 years later, 10 films in, it's still running and revving and going strong, fast and furiously with the fucking movies. And it's branching off now with the fucking Rock and Jason Statham and them doing their thing with it too as well. Meanwhile, this guy, Ken Lee, the writer of the magazine article, which inspired the whole fucking thing to happen in the first place, gets one line credit at the very, towards the very end of the credits of the Fast and Furious. Past the fucking part where people, if they cared about Ja Rule in that time, which I don't know who the fuck you are, you're insane. If you cared or liked what Ja Rule contributed to the soundtrack, it was trash, up and down, sideways, whatever, which way you want to paint it. He gets his fucking line of credit after the song credits, towards the fucking end when people already left the theater because who the fuck wants to know what the name of the song Ja Rule contributed at the fucking part where he was actually driving or up until where he was featured and barely featured in the movie and barely featured in the movie once they're done with his ass it's like i don't need to know what he fucking made these songs are trash whatever he gets his line of credit after the song credits people are gone people left already and if people even knew about fucking post credit scenes which i was like whoa they did this back when in 2001 but they did actually there's a nice little end credit scene at the very end of the credits so it might have been one of the first to do it. I don't, I'm not too sure. He gets his one fucking line of credit in the fucking end of the credits practically. And that's it. Crazy thing is too, when they caught up with him afterwards, years after the fact, years removed from fucking his contribution to the first film, he did say something that stood out to me. Now, I don't know how the human psyche works for anybody outside of me, obviously, because I'm just one individual, so I can't judge you him, her, it, whatever gender you identify as or try to pass off as to, as far as what's going on deep in your mind here. I would like to think everybody's coping with everything to get thrown at them as best as they can. And I really do hope so, considering mental health is a real thing. But also, 
this guy basically says when they caught up with him, Ken Lee, the writer of the article from back when, oh, you know, my friends, as a joke amongst ourselves, they like to take me out to every time a brand new one drops, Fast and Furious film drops, and they like to make me, oh, excuse me, they like to make me sit down, watch, and they all laugh at me. Guess what they're fucking laughing at? As a rib to him, you know, these are friends, quote unquote, more, more like assholes that just know him and that leech off him because, oh, I, I know the guy that fucking uh, inspired the whole Fast and Furious franchise. He's my friend, whatever. They drag him along to see every fucking film that comes out just to tell him, hey, uh, didn't you write the first one or didn't you inspire the very first Fast and Furious film? Oh, yeah, you did, right? But then uh, you're not a part of the second, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. It's like, I get it, asshole. Or at least it's what he's saying to himself in his mind, but he's not blurting it out loud just because he doesn't want to be that guy. If it was me, I'm fucking up everybody who makes that stupid joke. Also, I like to fuck myself up because that's also something I never share with anybody whatsoever. Unless they're like also writers and they all knew each other and they knew of when his story got picked to be made into a movie or a whole franchise like it is now, The Fast and Furious. It's just crazy to think. That's something I would never share to anybody unless I moved to fucking LA or Hollywood or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I wrote one article that turned into a fucking movie. That's a flex right there, or at least enough to get me some pussy. And I'm gonna stay out here and try my luck. Get some scripts written, you know, send some other shit out to any other fucking idiot director who wants to pick up my shit and make a movie out of it too. Why not? I can try my luck too, but he did. He kept writing, this Ken Lee fellow, so shout outs to him. I I'd love to get in touch with him and maybe interview him if I can get a hold of him, just to pick his mind and be like, not so much to like trigger him, but more like, damn, how does that even feel to like see this whole shit blow up like it did and you get no mention, you get no piece of it, no back end, nothing, just from the first one, if I stream it and I just happen to stumble upon the end credits and it's like, I happen to catch that one little line, blinking, you miss it, like, oh, as inspired or based off an article written by Ken Lee, and they can't even fucking name the article that he fucking wrote to even inspire this whole fucking franchise to begin with. It's just crazy. I, I love the pick his mind, but I'm gonna try to see if I can maybe, hopefully, you know, we'll put it out in the universe, get a hold of him, and really try to go in depth with that. that. That'd be cool, I think. Anybody out there, period, if you just happen to be like a podcast, a creator, a vlogger, a blogger, whatever the fuck you're doing out there, it, it's great that now we pretty much own our property first off and second we can kind of write our own rules as far as like we can go the patreon route you can contribute donate to whoever you fucking like like that at all too to begin with it's more like r and on terms but we also got to get more familiar with what the fuck we we put out there who's watching literally hopefully a lot of people now afterwards on youtube whatever or listening on any podcasting platform who just been watching of course but we got to be careful who's fucking out there watching listening taking our shit our ideas getting inspired by what we contribute to them and also what they got to put on the table for us to try to buy us out potentially